Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Lucky Buns. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to remote raid easily and successfully in Pokemon Go. I know many of you are tired of raiding players who constantly use the recommended battle parties. It's almost like they never learn despite seeing the top counters every single rotation, but it is what it is, right? Anyways though, this video is going to cover how to actually get through remote raids successfully with people who actually use the right counters. So as always, before we go ahead and get started, if you end up finding this video helpful and informative, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button down below, it would help me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So in this video, we're mainly going to focus on two apps, Poke Battler and Poke Genie. So in order to actually do the raids properly, you need to have a good battle team together. Now you might actually have some pretty good counters out there, but you might not realize that they're actually gonna be better strategized together in a team of six. This is where Poke Battler's Poke Box comes in clutch. So we're gonna use Poke Battler to build your team, and then we're gonna use Poke Genie to do the remote raids. The thing I absolutely love about Poke Genie is that it actually won't let you participate in a Defense Deoctus raid unless you have a team that's gonna do at least 20% damage against the raid boss. This feature is amazing because it means that every single player has to carry their weight. The problem with players not carrying their weight is that if you have a group of six, and two of them are just not using good counters whatsoever, it means that you're probably not going to be able to beat Defense Deoxys, which is just a waste of a raid pass entirely. And believe me, that happened earlier today. So that is a major reason why I'm making this video. So first things first, go ahead and download the Poke Battler app and then make an account. You can basically link it to anything, so I just linked it to Discord, and you want to link it to the same place every single time. So I link it to Discord, which means that if I want to sign in on the website, I just use my Discord login. If I want to sign in on the app, actual app. I just use my Discord login as well. You could use your Google login or your Facebook login, whatever it is you want to. Just make sure it's the same because it's going to register your ID the same and that way you can kind of switch between the two and your Pokebox is going to stay the same. So now that you've downloaded Poke Battler, we're going to go ahead and start building out your team with the Pokemon that you respectively have in game. So this part will take a little bit of time, but I guarantee it is going to be worth it. Go to Pokebox right here in the middle. Now from here, you can see that I've already built out a lot of my Pokemon. So from here, just go ahead and click on the plus icon, add your Pokemon respectively, and you can just copy the information from Pokemon Go exactly how you see it. So from here, just go ahead and input the stats for Gengar respectively, if it's a shiny Pokemon, if it's a lucky Pokemon. Now, instead of inputting the CP, what you guys can do instead of is if you scroll down, you can just go ahead and select the level of the Pokemon. So let's select level 40. And then you can put the IVs respectively. So let's put 15, 15, 15. This is assuming that the Gengar is a hundo. You know, you put whatever IVs it says on the actual Pokemon that you have. And then from there, go ahead and input the move set. So let's say it's Shadow Claw and Shadow Ball. If you have a secondary charge move unlocked, you can add this as well. I'm gonna put that it has Psychic. And then from there, just go ahead and click Create. And you're on your way. So do this with all the Pokemon that you respectively see as the top counters, as you guys can see on screen. I have a list of all the top counters for Defense Deoxys, so you have Darkrai, Chandelier, Gengar, Giratina, Weavile, and Yveltal. Now what I love about Poke Battler is that you can actually see the top 30 best counters for the respective raid boss. So if you go over to Raid Bosses, click on that, click on Defense Deoxys, and then you click on this top right icon with the two arrows, this will show you the top 30 best counters. Now you can select if you want to have Mega Pokemon enabled, Shadow Pokemon enabled, or if you just want to have Legendary Pokemon enabled. And then from here you can see the best counters, you can select the level, so we can put level 40 for this example. And then you can scroll down and see what's best here. So as you can tell, there are other really good counters like Tyranitar, Bisharp, S Cavalier, Honchkrow, Scizor, and you respectively want to add all these Pokemon to your Pokebox. And then once you do that, this is the thing I absolutely love about Poke Battler. It is going to select your best counters, respective of their level. If you're not sure what level your Pokemon is, you can just go ahead and input the IVs, and then keep selecting the level of your Pokemon that you kind of think it's around, and then it should populate the CP, respectively of that IV spread. So that's the thing that's actually really amazing as well. Now you can only store up to 50 Pokemon in Poke Battler under the free version, but what I would recommend doing for each raid boss is that once you kind of go through and you don't really need some of these Pokemon anymore, or at least you find out what your top six are gonna be, you can delete the rest and then add the respective Pokemon for the next raid boss just to get yourself prepared. In this situation, I'm just going with my top 15, I'll have to delete some of these later. But the cool thing is, guys, is that once you actually go to the raid bosses section again, click on Defense Deoxys, on this first screen on the top left, like this one right here, go ahead and just click on this little icon and then select Pokebox. Don't select the level, select Pokebox, and this is going to pick your top counters respectively. So you can see here, out of all my 15 Pokemon, these six are going to be the top best. Chandelier, two Gengar, Darkrai, 
Giratina Origin, didn't mean to click on Darkrai there. Giratina Origin and Weavile. Go ahead and click Copy Attackers. It's gonna take a search string. Go to your battle team. Go to your battle party and boom, it's gonna select all of your Pokemon. My Pokemon are fainted, so let me go ahead and revive them real quick. That way I can show you guys the proper example. So let me go ahead and try this again right now. Click paste on the search bar and boom, Poke Battler has now posted your top counters respective of what you currently have in game. So you might think that maybe Tyranitar is a really good option for raids or maybe uh, Giratina is a really good option for raids, but depending on the Pokemon's level, you might actually have better options out there. So in my situation, my Chandelier plus two Gengar, a Giratina Origin, Darkrai, and Weavile were gonna be my top best counters. Despite the fact that Giratina isn't even level 40, Darkrai is only level 30, and I have level 40 Tyranitar, level 40 Houndoom, and other Gengar as well. Now unfortunately when I tried to use Poke Genie to build my battle party, the search string did not work, and additionally, I don't really think it picked my best counters respectively of what I inputted, so this is why I do recommend Poke Battler when it comes down to building your team. Anyways though, let's go ahead and jump on over to the Poke Genie section of this video, which is going to be how to join the remote raid pass battle. Now I have been skeptical about Poke Genie in the past just because it is a third party app and it's also a third party IV checker, which is against Niantic's terms of service. That being said though, after doing a bit of research, Poke Genie hasn't really caused anyone to get banned. So just as a disclaimer, use this app at your own risk, but to be honest, it should be safe for the most part. So let's go ahead and head on over to Poke Genie right now. So go ahead and click on the app, click on the top left here, scroll down to profile, and then here it's gonna ask you to sign in again using Facebook or using Google or whatever. Input your trainer name, input your trainer code. This is how people are gonna invite you to the raid battles. And then once you exit out of that, go ahead and scroll back up, click on my Pokemon. Now the really cool thing about Poke Genie is that it takes the information from your Pokemon based off screenshots. So go back to Pokemon Go now. We're gonna exit out of this. We're gonna type in Ghost or Dark or whatever it is you wanna type in. Sort by favorite or sort by top CP. Click on the Pokemon. And from here, just go to take some screenshots. Take a screenshot of all your best Pokemon. Very, very simple and easy guys. So once you've done that respectively, go back to Poke Genie, click on the top right corner here, this little picture icon, and then you can go ahead and input your screenshot. So we're gonna go ahead and input this Giratina right now. Most of the time, Poke Genie isn't going to be able to figure out the moveset on your Pokemon though. So in order to join the raid battles, you're gonna have to have this inputted. So go ahead and click on the sword icon right here, and then you can input the moveset manually. So for my Giratina respectively, it has Shadow Claw and Shadow Ball. Go ahead and click on Shadow Claw, click on Shadow Ball, hit save button, and then just go ahead and swipe down. Do this with all the Pokemon respectively that I talked about in Poke Battler, like we already talked about building out your team, right? Take those six Pokemon and just input them into Poke Genie. And then from here, you can see if you actually have enough good counters in order to participate in a Defense Deoxys raid. So if we exit out here now, like we've already built out our Pokemon, go down to Raid, and then you can click on Defense Deoxys. So the thing about Defense Deoxys and all the raids in Poke Genie is that it functions off a queue system, meaning that there are going to be open lobbies for people hosting them, and we'll talk about the hosting aspect of this app later on in the video. And so based on the Pokemon that you've already input into Poke Genie, it's going to tell you how much your damage contribution is going to be. This needs to be 20% in order to actually participate in Defense Deoxys raids. As you guys can tell, I can do up to 26.3% damage, which is fantastic. It means that we can essentially four-man Defense Deoxys if other people have this uh, same percentage, although the minimum is 20%. So as long as your damage contribution is above 20%, you should be able to participate in Defense Deoxys raids. If your damage contribution isn't above 20%, you won't be able to participate until you get better counters. So if that is a problem, I have other videos on the channel that go over best Pokemon to power up in Pokemon Go and even budget Pokemon to power up. So I would recommend checking out those videos if you need help building out your teams. If you really can't join any remote raid lobbies this way, guys, try to just raid locally for the time being. If you can't, then I would really just focus on building out your Pokemon. Because when it comes down to these remote raid lobbies, you definitely need to be carrying your weight. You don't have that many players compared to the max number of 20, and you really have to make sure that you're not going in with like Lugia or Garchomp or Aggron or whatever it is, because literally that happened to me earlier today, and I lost a raid pass because of it, and it is what it is at the end of the day, but still, it is extremely frustrating for a player that is coming in with like you can see on screen, above 25% damage contribution, and the other players are probably pretty maybe like 7% damage contribution. It just doesn't add up. Anyways though, assuming that you do meet the damage contribution, go ahead and click on Raid Now. You gotta wait in a queue, but it usually goes by pretty fast. And so you basically just have to follow the instructions as simple as you see them. On the bottom, you can see the status of the raid. You can see if everyone's ready. You can see if you're waiting on the host, and then you can see if the host has actually sent out the invitations. 
Once the host has confirmed that they sent out the invitations, go back to Pokemon Go and wait for that invite. You should most likely get the invite. If you don't get the invite, just go back to Poke Genie and you can just input that you didn't get the raid invite on the finished raid section. They do ask you to fill out a small questionnaire after each raid battle. This is just to uh, make sure that you are doing your part respectively, even if you don't actually complete the raid, even if uh, the players don't show up. This is so that you don't get penalized for using the app. Again, this is a really, really efficient app, guys, and if you're not doing your part, if you're not doing the bare minimum, they will penalize you and you could potentially get banned from using this. So I would definitely take it very seriously. Now, because of this implementation, most of the time things should run pretty smoothly, but there are going to be times where things actually don't go as planned. And actually, the first way that I ended up doing on Poke Genie, things didn't go that way. So I'm gonna go over what I had to do instead. So what I recommend doing is building an empty lobby, and this is actually going to prevent you from wasting a raid pass. If you're going into the raid and you see that not everybody is there, right? So for example, I had like four players in the raid lobby. So hover over your empty lobby. Don't hover over the battle party that you wanna use for the raid boss. Hover over your empty lobby, then when the raid starts, it's not going to actually throw you into the raid. And if you don't have enough players, you can actually just back out of the raid entirely and it's not going to waste a raid pass. Your raid pass only gets wasted once you actually start that raid. So I definitely recommend doing this because there are going to be times where players are not going to join in respectively. So that is just a safeguard on your part, that way you don't waste any raid passes because let's be honest here, that is one of the most frustrating things in the world. And then from here just fill out the questionnaire respectively whether or not you completed the raid and you should be good to go. Again, this is a really, really important part of the process because this is how Poke Genie determines if you did your part in the raid battle. Now, overall, this is one of the best remote raid experiences I think I've actually had in Pokemon Go, so props to Poke Genie for this because they have really perfected their system. It was really, really solid, guys. Like, we got through, everyone was using the right counters, and we took down Defense Deoxys extremely fast. I mean, not to mention that they also had other players from their local area that were also doing the raid boss, so we took it down in like 183 seconds, which against Defense Deoxys, you can only do that if you're all using right counters. So with that being said, that's gonna be how you join remote raids respectively in Poke Genie. Now let's talk about hosting raids. So when it comes down to hosting raids on Poke Genie, this is extremely similar, guys. Just follow the steps on screen right now. Go ahead and click on the host option here, Take a screenshot of the raid battle that you have, import it into Poke Genie, and then from there, wait for everyone to send you a friend request. Then once they're all readied up, go ahead and add them in Pokemon Go, and then send them the raid invites respectively, go back to Poke Genie, select that you've actually sent them the raid invites and that you're ready to go. And then from there, wait for everyone to join, take down the raid boss, and that's it. And then of course, once you're done with the raid battle, don't forget to go back to Poke Genie and fill out that questionnaire. Very, very important. And that's as simple as it gets. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any live examples of the hosting aspect on this app, but it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Now, the interesting thing about hosting these raids as well is that you don't actually have to have that 20% damage contribution. So if you are a low level player, you can actually just go in and host the raids and then get a bunch of really strong players to help you beat it, which is amazing. So. It's kind of a win-win. The remote raiding aspect of the game is literally such a blessing, but it could also be such a curse because you get matched up with so many random players who don't know what they're doing. And even players in your local area might just be using recommended battle parties, which I've made a video on, you know, kind of going over why you shouldn't use recommended battle parties, but they're still gonna do it anyways. What can you do about it? Poke Genie makes sure that they actually build their raid teams up to 20% damage contribution. That is phenomenal. Like literally that is the best thing that you can ask for when it comes down to raiding with proper trainers. So if you guys are struggling, I highly, highly recommend using Poke Genie for your raids in the future. Poke Genie and Poke Battler are both 100% free. Like I previously mentioned, you don't have to pay anything to use those apps initially. They do have some subscription versions uh, that you do get extra features, but you really don't need them in my opinion. Like you could get them and it's gonna help you out for sure. It definitely helps uh, you know, support their business model. But if you just wanna use the free version, that's totally fine. It's gonna be enough to get you these uh, remote raids done correctly. That being said that the video is probably running a little bit long right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and end off here. As always, if you could end up hitting that like button down below, would really appreciate it. Subscribe if you wanna see more of these videos in the future, if you want me to cover anything else like this on the channel. And I will see you all real soon in the next one.